How's it going today guys? So today we're going to be talking about how to stop living paycheck to paycheck. Now I just recently did a video called how to break out of the lower class. And if you're someone who's interested on this topic, I highly recommend that video as well because I talk about a lot of ideas in that video that would help you stop living paycheck to paycheck as well. But for this video, I kind of wanted to make it a more pictorial type video and kind of have a representation of this in an actual picture so you guys can see it in front of your eyes because a lot of us are visual learners. We need to see things. You may hear something, you may read something, but until you can visualize it, it may not click with you. It may not set that light bulb off in your head. I'm really excited to share this video with you guys because I'm talking about some of the teachings from one of my favorite books of all time, which is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. And uh, I highly recommend that as the first book you read if you're someone who's trying to break out of the rat race, if you're someone who's trying to, uh, you know, improve your life and make more money and improve your financial situation. So the link to that book is in the description if you guys are interested. But anyways, what I want to talk about first is income versus expenses because if you're paycheck to paycheck, your income is equal to your expenses. So what does it actually look like? So this is where you want to be in an ideal situation. This is the minimum, okay? You want to be someone whose expenses are 10% lower than your income at minimum, and then you're gonna take that 10% and you're going to invest it, or at least save it. You know, you're gonna save it for a rainy day fund and eventually, hopefully, invest some of that money. So this is where you want to be as a start. I don't think this is where you wanna be your whole life because you're gonna be working for a long time to ever be able to save enough money to, you know, enjoy your life and have a retirement. So you wanna be saving saving a minimum of 10% of your money. And in order to do that, you need to have your expenses below your income. So if your income is right here at $3,000 and you have $2,700 of expenses, you have 10% or $300 left over every single month to save as well as invest. Now, 49% of Americans are paycheck to paycheck. This is what this looks like. Your income is equal to your expenses. There's no surplus left over at the end of the month. Your account balance stays the same. Your money comes in and it all goes right back out. Maybe you have a small cash cushion in your checking account, but you have no money invested. Maybe you have an employer 401k if you're lucky, but that's not enough. That's not gonna cut it. That's a good start, but you need to be doing things above and beyond that. So you're someone whose balance is the same at the end of every single month and you're saying, how the hell do I stop doing this because this sucks. I work 40 hours a week and then I take all that money and I blow it. And it's like, where's my money going? The best way to answer that question as far as where your money is going, check out the video I did on how to break out of the lower class because I covered a ton of stuff in there as far as discretionary versus non-discretionary expenses. We're not gonna get into that in this video. We're gonna kind of talk about some different stuff that I think is gonna help you guys a lot. Now, even worse than paycheck to paycheck is where most Americans are. These are people who are contributing towards their debt, they are in debt, and they owe money to other people. So this is someone whose expenses exceed their income. So that area right there, this filled in area, is the debt that they're accruing every single month. So here's a somebody right here with a $3,000 income and $3,500 of expenses. Well, that money's gotta come from somewhere and it's gonna come from a credit card. So just so you guys know, 80% of Americans are in debt now, of those 80%, 44% of Americans do have mortgage debt. So most of us are not living in a home that is paid off. Most of us are living in a home that we're paying for with our mortgage. But even so, that's only 44% of us, and 80% of us are in debt. So this is even worse than being paycheck to paycheck because you actually don't even have enough money to pay for your expenses. So how do you fix this? There's two ways you can fix it. You can make more money or you can spend less money or the best case scenario, do a little bit of both. So now we're gonna talk about what I call the defensive versus the offensive approach, okay? So here's how I want you to think about this. This is the defensive approach. The defensive approach is to lower your expenses, okay? But there's something, there's a saying before that you, that you can only pinch your money so much. You can only spread yourself so thin. Yeah, you can clip coupons. Yeah, you can, you know, buy discount groceries, you know, use less energy, turn off lights in your house. Sure, you can keep your thermostat at a reasonable temperature, but that's only gonna get you so far, guys. That's not gonna make you rich. It will help improve your situation, but it's a defensive approach, okay? The way I see a defensive approach, it's kind of like shriveling up, okay? Kind of shrinking yourself down and being a minimalist. And it's not a bad idea, but I want you guys to think more in terms of the offensive approach. What is the offensive approach? 
that's increasing your income, okay? Because maybe you like your standard of living. Maybe you like being able to buy foods that you enjoy, not so much having to buy what's on sale. Maybe you like going out to a restaurant once or twice a month. Maybe there's things that you do that you want to continue to do because it, it's, you know, it gives you a quality life, okay? If you want to take the defensive approach, you have to cut things out of your life and scale back. You should do this, but I want you guys to think in terms of being offensive and being on the offense and kind of running towards the problem as opposed to running away from the problem. The defensive approach is kind of running away from the problem. The problem is you're not making enough money. And your solution is to shrink down, shrink what you're spending. So how do you go about doing the defensive approach? It's very simple, guys. you got to spend less money. I talked about this a lot in that other video, but basically figure out what your discretionary and your non-discretionary expenses are. Make a budget and then cut stuff out. You know, stop spending certain amounts of money on alcohol and entertainment and just figure out where you're spending too much money. Everyone should do this, but it's the extent that you do this. I mean, do I clip coupons? Absolutely not. It's a waste of my time. I don't use the shopper cards. I don't do any of that stuff because because it's a waste of my time. I'm more on the offensive approach of making more money so I don't have to clip coupons, so I don't have to you know, look at what's on sale and buy food that's on sale. Some people, that's what they're gonna do, but I want you guys to think outside the box and be offensive. So what is the offensive approach? The best way I could demonstrate this is looking at Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. This is right out of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sure you guys have seen this or a variation of this somewhere, but I'm hoping that once you see this, the light bulb's gonna go off in your head because I can remember the first time I read through Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it was like something I was just reading through. My friend recommended it. I was depressed at the time. And he was like, check out this book. You know, it, it really helped me when I was, you know, between a rock and a hard place. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll read a stupid book and see what this does. But I remember reading that book and like having that aha moment where I was like, this is it. This is the ticket. This is why I'm unhappy. This is what I need to do. And that's what sparked this YouTube channel where I'm now what's considered the S quadrant or self-employed. So let's go over the cash flow quadrant. So you are one of these things. Maybe you're multiple of these things, which is good. If you're two of these things, uh, that's good. Maybe you're a, uh, you know, an employee as well as an investor or a business owner and an investor or something like that. But anyway, most of us fall into the category of being in the E quadrant or being an employee. This is somebody who has a job and time is equal to money and there's no breaking out of that equation because you're paid a salary or you're paid an hourly wage. If you're paid a salary, your time doesn't even equal your money because there's some times that you may have to work 70 hours and you make the same money. Some days or sometimes you'll work 40 hours and you make the same amount of money. But the number one problem with this, the number one problem with that strategy is that this is not scalable because the only way to make more money is to waste more of your time or spend more of your time. I see working a job as wasted time, but you know, some people would disagree with that. I mean, you are making money, but this is not scalable, okay? You're never gonna go anywhere. This is not a way to make more money by sacrificing your time. Most of us don't wanna work more than 40 hours a week at a job that we are not necessarily enjoying. I mean, I love what I do and I probably put in some weeks 80 or 90 hours. I work every single day on YouTube, but I love it. That's the difference. This is a low risk approach. And for those of you familiar with stocks, low risk stocks give you a low return, okay? So the low risk strategy of being an employee will give you a low return in life where you're gonna be compensated a small amount of money. Let's do the S quadrant next because this is where I fall. This is somebody who is self-employed. So rather than having a job, you create a job. You go out there and you find a way to make money by providing a service or providing a skill. So you create a job and hopefully your time is equal to more money because there's less people taking the money out. I mean, the idea of having a job is to make the people at the top richer and you are just a worker bee and you make a small amount of money based on how much money you're actually making them. If you're self-employed, you're in control of how much money you're making and how much you pay yourself. So time will equal more money, but the problem with being self-employed is that time is still equal to money and you're paid by your effort. So this still isn't as scalable as a, uh, as a business, which we're gonna talk about in a second, but you can scale being self-employed into a business by hiring people or contracting stuff out that you don't necessarily want to do.
This is a good place to be. This is a good place to get started is to move into the self-employed quadrant. And you don't necessarily have to quit your job. You could be an employee as well as being self-employed by having a side hustle. That's how I started on YouTube, guys. I was making videos in my spare time. And uh, it turned into my full-time you know, gig right now where I am self-employed making all of my money online. So basically, when you're putting in the time, you're going to make more money because you're paid by your effort. If I put in 90 hours of work in a week on YouTube, I'm going to see more money. If I put in 20 hours, I'm going to see a hell of a lot less money because you are in control of your own destiny. You're in control of how much money you make. If you don't put the effort in, you're not going to make enough money. You're not going to make as much money. Now, what I like about this is you can scale it into a business, like I said, and this is probably moderate risk because... Most people, if you are you know, disciplined enough, you can make a living being self-employed. But in order to scale it into a business, this is where you guys should be focused, is scaling something into a business. Because at that point, you are contracting out the work you don't want to do. You're hiring people to do the shit that you don't want to do. So one example of this is I've actually started doing this myself because I want to scale this. I see the bigger picture here. So I actually decided I'm done making thumbnails. This is consuming way too much of my time. And I hired a graphic designer. And now I I pay him to make my thumbnails and because I'm making enough on YouTube I can afford to have an employee or somebody you know on the books there that I'm just contracting work out to as a result I'm able to scale this because I just freed up some more of my time which I can put towards an effort that actually makes me money so that's how this becomes scalable okay so now let's move and look at the B quadrant this is the business owners out there this is when you have people working for you and the people make you the money the people make you the money most of us are the people making the money for the business owner. We are the people making the money for the person at the very top. That's a bad place to be. So instead of being paid hourly, instead of being paid by your effort, you're being paid by your ability to select talent and contract out work and manage the work. As a result, you're being paid by projects or by clients, and this is scalable, guys. This is scalable. You're able to hire more employees over time. This is higher risk, and as a result, it's a much higher reward. Most of the rich people out there, most of the millionaires and the billionaires have a business of some kind. You know, they started a business. There is risk involved, but for those of us who do this and are successful, there are tremendous rewards in doing this. And then we have the I category. This is what my channel is about. This is the investors out there, guys. You can be in any of these three quadrants and also be in the fourth investor quadrant, the I quadrant. This is arguably the most important one because it doesn't matter if you make $14 an hour or $200,000 a year, you can make yourself a great future by investing, okay? So this is when you're an investor and money works for you. So basically your money makes you more money. Your money is equal to your money. You don't have to spend any more time. You just have to put your money to work. So what I love about this is it's passive. It's passive income. I mean, if you're somebody who goes out there and invests in uh, dividend stocks and you have a dividend reinvestment, you never have to look at that. Every quarter, the dividends that are paid by those stocks are going to be reinvested back into the stock, and you don't have to do anything. You just sit there and you let your money grow over time. What's great about this is it's scalable because you can add more money to it, and this is variable risk. For somebody who wants a low-risk investment, maybe you're going to look at bonds. For someone who wants a high-risk investment, maybe you're going to go start flipping real estate. There's something out there for everyone when it comes to investing based on what your risk tolerance is. So you could find some really high-risk investments out there or find some very low-risk investments, but you need to be in multiple quadrants. If you're just in the employee quadrant, if you're just sitting there in the E, unless you go for the defensive approach, you're always going to live paycheck to paycheck. So maybe start with the defensive approach, start getting control of your spending, but I want you to at some point think about a more offensive approach. That way you can kind of at some point buy some luxury items. Maybe you want a newer car. Maybe there's things you want because we're human beings and we have desires. And yeah, it, it makes sense on paper to be a minimalist, but you know when your friends are inviting you out for a beer and you go out and you order a glass of water because you're like, oh, I'm going to be defensive, that sucks, okay? Okay. That's not a fun situation to be in. So I want you guys to think about a more offensive approach. And I really hope that showing you guys the, the uh, Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant, I really hope that sparked something in your mind where you went, okay, I need to start investing or I need to start a side hustle. Or maybe you're ambitious and you're going to start a business. You've got to do something here to be offensive. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be stuck living paycheck to paycheck or having to, you know, to, uh, you know, shrink down and be on the defensive side of things. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm going to link up the video at the end on how to break out of the lower class. If you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing to be notified of any future uploads. And as always, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video.